This is a story about getting the worst news imaginable. Finding out your child has a rare disease. But it's also a story about fighting back against all odds. Welcome to Vital Signs. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. There are giant pharmaceutical companies with thousands of employees who spend billions of dollars trying to crack the genetic codes and develop treatments for diseases. The couple you're about to meet did it virtually on their own. For nearly four years, the Hempels have allowed me to follow along on a journey where the word no is not an option. Drink with the how I wonder what you are. As a dad of three daughters, I can tell you, it doesn't get much better than this. A time you can never recapture. In most families, the kids grow up onto bigger and better things. For Addison and Cassidy Hempel and their parents, Hugh and Chris, life took a different turn. It was really frustrating because, you know, it's difficult when you know something's wrong and then you can't really get an answer. This is a couple that hates to lose. Chris was a basketball star at UC Berkeley. Hugh played hockey at the University of Vermont. Ultimately ended up at Netscape, the internet company, and that's where I met Chris. They were on the cutting edge at Netscape when the company, when the whole internet, was just getting off the ground. I was in the PR department, so I'd call media people and talk about the internet, and they had no clue what the internet is, what email is. In 1999, the young couple cashed out their stock options, got rich, and left to work for themselves. We decided to have kids, and I really wanted to be a soccer mom and PTA and all that, you know, and just kind of take it down a notch. A few years later, the twins were born. For the first year and a half, they seemed healthy. The first problems were subtle. We started noticing they started having problems with balance and coordination. Um, and not seeing things kind of in front of them, like, you know, toys. And then it got worse, much worse. Some of this is hard to watch. Stumbles, lost words. The doctors were reassuring at first, less so as the months went by. Yeah, this is easier. Usually I'm listening when they're accessed. Eventually, Dr. Caroline Hastings, a specialist at Children's Hospital of Oakland in California, diagnosed the twins with a rare genetic disorder, Neiman Pick Type C. It's got a nickname that says it all childhood Alzheimer's. Is that a fair comparison? I think that's a fair comparison. It's how the kids look. They appear to be growing and developing normally. They develop speech, they walk, they talk, they have good quality lives, and then they start losing those abilities. Neiman Pick is caused by a faulty gene that helps the body process cholesterol. You might not realize it, but cholesterol is made and used by nearly every cell in the body. In a patient with Neiman Pick, the cholesterol accumulates, especially in nerve cells, until it reaches levels that are toxic. It causes uh, abnormalities in movement and uh, in thinking and swallowing, um, and the children usually die in their mid-teens. And there is no known treatment. It is the worst news imaginable. As that reality sank in, like they had done all their lives, Chris and Hugh got to work. Except this time, the mission was to save their daughters. A generation ago, a diagnosis like this was a pretty lonely thing. But by the time the Hempels got the news about Addie and Cassie, things were starting to change. There were patient support groups popping up everywhere. And there were also thousands of research papers, as Chris found, available with the touch of a keystroke. My computer wouldn't allow me to search, so I, I found this disk. Chris poured through hundreds at a time, printing them out and sticking them into her big pink binder. In late 2007, Chris read a paper from scientists in Texas. They had a colony of mice with Neiman Pick, and they were giving them a compound called cyclodextrin. The mice were living nearly twice as long. But what might it mean for humans? People knew about this stuff, but they didn't think it was medicine. 
It was basically filler for lab experiments. It's in consumer products, too. It's in chewing gum, it's in Febreze, it's in yeah. Tide. In Febreze, cyclodextrin binds to molecules in the air that cause odor and eliminates them. Could it bind to cholesterol in the twins' bodies and do the same thing? What's more, it seemed safe. It was sugar. That's it. Just a form of sugar. I think this one is the one that's fine, and then this is the one. But Hugh and Chris weren't truly convinced until they saw this, a remarkable video posted by Dr. Charles Veet, a veterinary researcher at the University of Pennsylvania. These cats essentially have cholesterol metabolism just like the twins, so they have a, the same kind of genetic defect that Addie and Cassie have just naturally. This video shows cats with a feline version of Neiman Pick Type C. The cats on the left are shaking and staggering. The cat on the right has been treated with cyclodextrin. What did you think when you saw those? What did you think it meant for your own, your own children? It's very easy to translate that to your kids because you see them suffering too. It reinforced why we were doing this and the potential and even the risk that we needed to take. We were willing to do anything and take that risk. And you know, without risk, there's no reward.